Um, hello, everybody. Good morning, Britain. Good morning, Serbia. Welcome to the first online conference, uh, In Focus Talks UK and Serbia, organized by Color Media Communications, a company that publishes magazine Diplomacy and Commerce, the economist syndication in Serbia. Let's start. Uh, the UK and Serbia recently gave, have signed a partnership trade and cooperation agreement to ensure that 682 million pounds trade can continue and grow between the two countries. The agreement secures preferential trade access between the UK and Serbia with significant savings for businesses and support jobs uh, and the wider economy. Uh, it also sets out how the two countries will strengthen political, economic, security and uh, cultural ties and reaffirms the UK's support for governance ref uh, reform in Serbia that will safeguard its competitive business environment and open democratic society. Today we'll try to summarise the most important aspects of British-Serbian overall relations and Okay, we are more than pleased to welcome our participants. In today's talk, um, it's from the British Serbian Chamber of Commerce. We have Dr. David Lansman. Hello, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Richard Robinson, Executive Director from Belgrade. Good morning. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Jadranka, Ms. Jadranka Dervishevic Kitaric, Executive Director from London, actually from Cambridge now, isn't it so? Good morning. I'm just presently in Cambridge. Okay. And our host is Mr. Robert Tobin, the president of uh, Color Press Group. Hello, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rikitsa Milosevic. Um, I'm the editor of The Economist uh, World in 2021 for Serbia, Croatia and North Macedonia. In focus, uh, we, we will talk... Um, uh, and record uh, the meeting, and it will follow. Uh, it, it, it could be followed on YouTube channel of Diplomacy and Commerce magazine. So uh, let's start from the first uh, round of questions. We'll start from Dr. David Lansman. Uh, for the beginning, um, uh, welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation to join this talk. Uh, so on the 1st of January, Brexit actually and finally happened. Um, it will reshape the UK-EU relationships and relations so far. Um, it has actually reshaped it uh, so far. It's 1st of June now. And it will reshape um, and has reshaped Serbian-British economic relations. How will it happen? How will you assess our overall relations today? Good morning. Well, thank you very much for that question. I think it's uh, probably a, a little bit early to uh, make the final assessment on Brexit and on the UK's relationship with the uh, EU. Whatever numbers people might have been crunching have clearly been seriously affected by the pandemic. So it's really rather difficult to make that assessment. But what I think we can say, uh, as far as uh, the UK-Serbia relationship is concerned, is that uh, now the UK is outside the EU, as is Serbia, uh, the appeal of trade between the two countries, I think, will grow. Because if you're a, a British uh, business uh, sitting in the UK, uh, you no longer think to yourself, well, the EU is, is what we're part of. That's the, that's the obvious first place to go. These other places are a little bit more difficult. Shall I bother? Uh, actually, there's a much more level playing field. And I think as far as uh, countries like Serbia are concerned, geographically firmly in uh, Europe, nearby, uh, easy uh, business relations in many ways, many people speak English, markets that people can uh, learn about and understand quite easily. I think it, it, Brexit will, uh, I don't suppose it was quite the purpose of Brexit, but I think Brexit will have a very positive uh, effect on British-Serbian uh, business relationships. And I think the interest that we're already seeing both from British companies and from the, um, the British government's uh, trade department and so on um, is really quite, um, quite significant. That's very early days, it's very early days. The trade agreement that you mentioned has only just been uh, signed relatively recently. Uh, so it's going to take time to have that effect, but I think people are already opening their eyes to Serbia and that's perhaps the, 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 the message from the British side. From the Serbian side, and of course we as a chamber represent British companies and Serbian companies equally. That's the great thing about chambers of commerce. We're not like governments. Governments are only interested in exporting from one side to the other and uh, attracting investment back the other way. We're interested in both sides, both directions. And I think Serbian companies will find that uh, Britain is, is more interested 
in doing business will be more uh, alert to the opportunity for investment. There have already been some modest uh, improvements in the labour mobility and visa situation uh, that you know, we would like to see more, I'm sure, but, that, but there's a good start. So I think in both directions, one can see the potential at what is a very early stage. I would like to ask you one thing. I brought yesterday's issue from the newspaper Politica. You can see on the front page, uh, there is a British flag and Big Ben. Uh, Big Ben, um, actually it's written, uh, London is uh, lowering uh, the uh, custom taxes on Serbian uh, products. And uh, one thing that uh, is mentioned here is uh, that President Vucic said that uh, we are a bit late, like five months late uh, with this um, agreement. Brexit happened on the 1st of January and uh, it came into effect like a few days ago uh, on 20th of May. And uh, President, President Vucic said um, that Serbian GDP will um, rise um, a little bit less than expected because of that, like uh, 0.1 or 0.2. Um, what took us so long uh, to uh, sign it and ratify it now? I mean, we, we knew that Brexit was a factor in June 2016. Why, why now? I mean, uh, we, we could have done it in, in the first of, on the 1st of January. Well, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, when you showed me that picture of Politico, I was a bit worried, the picture of the Union flag. Was this going to be a good news or a bad news story? Glad to see it's a good news story. Um, I think from the... Um, I, I think sitting in, sitting in the UK, um, I think one has to bear in mind that the, you know, the UK, Brexit was a British decision. Britain decided to leave the EU and it found itself needing to negotiate con uh, trade continuation agreements with a lot of countries. This is something the UK had not uh, done for yeah, yeah. Uh, something that Britain had not done for uh, a very long time, negotiate its own trade agreements. And I think there was a real capacity issue in the British government. Um, now, the negotiations, as I'm, I'm not involved in, I used to be a diplomat, but I'm not involved in politics anymore. Uh, I know that you know, those negotiations, like all negotiations, take a while to, uh, to, um, to be concluded. We as a chamber were very concerned during that period of time uh, that they should be concluded as quickly as possible. And we, uh, we did as much as we could directly by engaging with the trade ministers and trade ministries of both countries and through the Serbian Chamber of Commerce and the British Chambers of Commerce and so on, because it did matter, and it mattered to our members that they were having to face these additional obstacles and tariffs. But the point is, it's through now. It's been agreed, it's coming into force, and looking forward, I, you know, accepting the, the difficulties there have been, but looking forward, this means that we are now, first of all, back where we were, we're on a firm footing for, uh, as you said at the beginning, uh, continuing and growing trade. But I think it is also, uh, a, an important signal that the governments of the two countries have sent to business that we are up for doing this. We've done it. We've reached an agreement. Uh, maybe there will be scope in time to, to improve and extend the agreements further. But it's a signal that there is support. And I think we're seeing from the ministries and the, the governments of both sides that support as well. So, yeah, I wish it had been done on January the 1st. It would have saved the Chamber a great deal of time and our members a great deal of time and money. But it's been done and we're moving on. Great, we're actually happy whenever it came. Welcome. Uh, Robert, uh, I would like to ask you now from the perspective of the owner of the biggest publishing company, maybe in the Western Balkans, and someone who cooperates with the UK company, The Economist, for so long, uh, what do you think about cooperation between the UK and Serbia? <clears throat> hello, Zikic, hello to everyone. Our cooperation with the economy started in 2009 in Dubai. It was FIPP license fair there. FIPP is the International Federation of Periodical Press based in London also. Uh, and that was the very beginning, it was 2009, that was the very beginning of the economic crisis and really not the moment to start new license edition. But we were brave and decided to launch the Economy Serbian edition then in 2009. Today, after 12 years, we are... We have uh, the Economist edition in Serbia, uh, Croatia, and as you mentioned, in North Macedonia. And this December, we will launch Bosnia and Herzegovina.
Uh, since 2012, uh, we organized the Economist Conference in the National Parliament of Serbia in December every year uh, uh, with, uh, with new edition. And last two years in Croatia too. Uh, and uh, this December, we plan to organize uh, the first the Economist Conference in Sarajevo in cooperation with Central Bank of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, also, as you mentioned, uh, in 2016, we launched Diplomacy and Commerce monthly magazine here in Serbia in English in cooperation with The Economist. So we have a syndication contract to use their articles uh, in our edition. Uh, next year, uh, we launched, in 2017, we launched a Croatian edition. And two years later, in 2019, uh, Austrian edition in Vienna in German. Uh, before The Economist, in 2006, we signed the license contract with Hello Magazine, so another uh, UK uh, edition. Uh, we launched this uh, magazine in 2007, and today we are proud publisher of Serbian edition of Hello last, uh, last, <coughs> last 40 years. So as, as you can see, it is really in, in tough times, in times of economic crisis, in times of, of uh, technological changes, we are, we are still uh, strong in, in, in this uh, publishing segment and we, we, are, uh, we have our strong partners in, in UK and I hope it will last. Great, Robert, thank you uh, from, uh, for your perspective. Uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, you're executive director in Belgrade. Uh, you have abundant experience uh, as a director of the British Chamber. Uh, how would you rate the Serbian market and the cooperation we have with the UK, uh, having in mind that uh, the UK is not exactly the traditional uh, British market uh, and uh, not traditionally uh, the... Uh, area of um, British investing. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that question. In simple terms, I see uh, the Western Balkans as a, as a an bilateral trade and investment as a, as a great opportunity now for, in, actually in both directions. Talking about the British attitude, um, yes, historically, for the reasons that David mentioned earlier, um, I think that it was just so much easier for British companies to export to particularly the nearer companies in the EU, um, that they found the additional challenges of exporting to the Balkans in general and Serbia in particular, um, just sort of the, the, that it wasn't as attractive. I think one of the consequences of Brexit is is that every, uh, sort of export markets are now being re-evaluated by a lot of British companies. Um, and now clearly a uh, combination of the difference between exporting to the EU and exporting to the Western Balkans is much less. I think furthermore, I think the whole issues brought out by the pandemic um, to do with the, the issue about nearshoring is an attractive one, whether it's in the IT sector, whether it's actually manufacturing and importing to the uh, UK. Um, I think being able to just put stuff on the back of a lorry, even if they're new customs regulations, um, is, it remains attractive. So, yeah, I, um, and I think overall what we're seeing now is increased interest because, uh, because of this reevaluation. So in the UK, uh, UK Serbian bilateral trade, in the food and drink sector, I think what you're seeing is an increased interest um, in, in the agriculture and food processing sector in Serbia and trying to break into the British market and particularly developing um, uh, uh, re relationships with the uh, British food retailers um, we're seeing ag again and again. In the other way around, I think that you know, what we're seeing is some the, the big branded goods uh, or mass branded goods, whether it be sort of alcohol based or actually just fast moving consumer goods, increasing early that sort of people and uh, companies are now thinking about the Western Balkans, possibly rather less as an add on to sort of the farther parts of the EU and as an as an export destination in their own right. Um, the other huge opportunity that I think UK companies are thinking about for the first time is all the um, all the infrastructure needs of the Western Balkans. And I think we're seeing uh, increasingly sort of 
um, a wide range of companies, but particularly in the civil engineering sector, looking at the Western Balkans and and trying to get um, a, a a fair sh a fair share, as it were, of all the uh, investment contracts in the transport sector, in the telecommunications sector. Um, everything that, that, that you hear the Serbian government talking about most days. Um, so, yeah, I think now there is a real cusp of a change. Where it will lead, of course, is it's a case of how many people actually take up the opportunities. But there's no doubt that there's a recognition on both sides that the opportunities exist and that what's happened in the past is um, no longer relevant. Great, thank you. Thank you, Richard. And um, last but not least, the only lady in today's talk, uh, Yadrenka. Uh, you are the executive director in London. Uh, if you were to compare the UK and Serbian markets, uh, what would you say? What are the most significant uh, similarities and differences? Well, as Adam Smith reminded us in the 18th century, different countries are good at different things. So, for example, the UK has a very notable competitive advantage in advanced machinery, design, manufacturing, biopharma, and advanced technologies. So, for example, JCB, Jaguar Land Rover, uh, Land Rover sorry, which is a British Motors, who are very valuable members of ours, uh, are the ones who are already present in, in Serbia and they are fantastic. The same my colleague Richard Robinson mentioned about whiskey and gin, which is already in, the, in Serbia, but also in, in the region. It is also important to highlight the high standards in civil engineering and project finance. By the same token, Serbia has a competitive advantage in ICT, and the reason for that is actually education system, which focuses on STEAM subjects. So the reason for example, we have done ICT tech webinars, which we just started two weeks ago. We would like to highlight that great opportunity what Serbia and youth can offer to the UK market. The second advantage which Serbia has is in speciality agriculture and food manufacturing. In recent years, it's adding more and more value. I can use an example, for example, about huge surprise by the British market on those particular taste, design and quality of those products. When we attended the speciality food in 2019, together with our chairman, Dr. David Lansman, the British market and the buyers were so surprised. They asked us, where have you been? This is fantastic. Because of that, we are going to we are planning to introduce in the larger scale Serbian products next year at IFE, the largest um, the largest event of food and beverage in the UK. And we hope Serbia will be there as a pavilion to show all of those great tastes. So to play to its compar comparative advantage, Serbia and the UK as a country should play to their strengths. We and the BSCC are very determined as a bilateral chamber to bring the best from both countries to the benefits of all stakeholders. Well, the new trade agreement makes this much easier and we are very much looking forward to that. Great, thank you. Uh, what about wine? I think that wine is uh, today uh, the second or the, the second biggest or the biggest uh, growing uh, industry in Serbia. Uh, is it uh, making a breakthrough uh, or to the British market? Uh, I would say we will have to see it. The reason we haven't done as much as we should, there are three elements. The first, you need uh, enough quantity to be entering the market. In the same time as a quantity, regular quantity, you need to have a good price to compete with New Zealand, Australia, Chile, South African. I would have mentioned French and Spanish wine. We tried in 2015 and 16, we had exhibition in Serbian embassy in the UK with all famous 
which we all well know, Alexandrovich, Kovarcevich, um, uh, 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 I forgot the name from Vojvodina, do forgive me. There are uh, Zlatko Bogdan, I believe, but it was too early. Now we can see what's happened in Serbia. It's improved a lot. There are lots of new vineyards, technology is better. And I believe now is the right time to enter the market again. So, which will connect with the tourism. And this is the way how to go forward as advantage of Serbia, which is country in Europe. Uh, Mr. Lansman, uh, Dr. Lansman, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the UK is reformulating its trade deals and policies towards the world. At the same time, enforces a swift and successful vaccination rollout, which has proven to be the crucial thing for the recovery of the economy. Uh, the mm. overseas territories are among the best and among the best in the world, like Gibraltar, the Cayman Islands, etc., Montserrat. Uh, and the UK itself is doing great. Can we expect the British economy to be the one of the leaders in 2021 and 22? Because I uh, wrote an article about that, and I've read uh, quite a lot of articles in British press about uh, how fast the pace is going to be comparing to the other countries of Europe uh, which uh, started um, rollout, vaccination rollout a uh, few months later. Well, it's been good to see all the way through from the earliest days of the vaccine rollout that Britain and Serbia have been way up at the top of the European uh, League. And I'm sure that's going to stand both countries in good stead as we go forward. I mean, I, I, I can only defer to you. You've written the articles. I've read some of the articles on the uh, promise of the British economy, and it certainly looks extremely uh, encouraging after a uh, very low, a very, a very steep fall. It's, it's rising very quickly. It's actually quite difficult to compare some of the numbers from one country to another, as you know, because people count in slightly different ways. But it's a very positive story. I think what's interesting from our point of view as a, a, as a British Serbian Chamber of Commerce and for us talking about British Serbian trade is that there's, there's an awful lot going on which provides a lot of opportunities. There's the shock, if you like, of Brexit and the way in which Companies, as, as, as we've already said, as Richard said as well, we, we, we are reappraising uh, the opportunities and looking in different ways. There's the shock of the pandemic. And, uh, and again, as we've said, what that does to supply chains, what that does to businesses thinking. And now, because of the effect of the vaccine, and I think the numbers are looking pretty positive in Serbia and in Britain, that gives an, an, an more opportunities for, uh, for companies. Um, so this is just something for us to seize. It doesn't mean that you know, the chamber is going to be able to come back in a year or two's time and celebrate massive improvements in trade. We've got to work at it and we've got to see those opportunities and promote those opportunities. But they are really there now in a way they wouldn't have been so obvious uh, in, uh, in the case of business as usual. It's people seeing things. If you haven't seen something before, you won't have reacted to it. If you see something that's different, you can take those opportunities. Everybody who's in business knows that you're, you're looking out for opportunities to do something something different. And I think now is a great time. So, yeah, I think we can um, look into 2021 20, as it goes on in a, in, in a positive way. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, Richard, the UK and Serbia are to straighten business ties, uh, business ties uh, by signing a partnership trade and cooperation agreement. Uh, what does it mean in practice? You said something about that. Uh, can you add something more? Well, I, I think the first thing is to understand uh, is to understand where it's coming from. Essentially, after Brexit, as David explained, the UK realised pretty quickly that they needed to put in place something like seventy um, uh, bi new bilateral trade agreements in place. The Serbian um, and the whole approach, frankly, the only approach they could have taken was one of actually not trying to negotiate something new, but trying as quickly as possible to put in bilateral terms what uh, previously been covered on an EU uh, EU basis. And obviously for Serbia, that's the EU Stabilisation and Association Agreement. So, um, frankly, it's a case of putting back, uh, to start off with putting back what was there before, on a bilateral basis. So, but it is different. 
Um, and I think it is particularly with, but it's also important not to look at the trade agreement in isolation, more in terms of the whole environment. Um, and it's this, the, the all the changes that I think leads to the opportunities that I mentioned briefly before. Um, and so I think really um, that that it's uh, that it's worth not focusing on the trade agreement itself. It's there. It's important. And the last few months have been a bit difficult. But it's also worth remembering that things like the uh, <laughs> the double tax treaty between Serbia and the UK hasn't changed at all. The uh, the bilateral investment protection treaty remains unchanged. So. Is to actually, despite everything, there is a quite a lot that is left unchanged. Um, the most important thing is the change in attitude to exporters and investors. In, so, for instance, um, in my time since I joined the chamber a little over a year ago, I have been pleasantly surprised by the number of Serbian companies that have been looking at investing in the UK. Most typically in the uh, sort of IT tech startups, uh, not entirely, um, but these have been regular, uh, we've had regular inquiries um, and the reasons are um, nothing to do, frankly, nothing to do with the trade treaty. It's either that, uh, as, that principally that they're looking to get close to potential investors given the huge ecosystem of the, in the UK, for tech, uh, tech investing, or that they, that the companies have have broken into the successfully into the Western Balkans markets. They're market leaders, and they want to uh, get it uh, find another market. And for reasons uh, that that make sense to them as individual companies, they've decided that the UK is the next market to try and break into. And sometimes, actually, it's both reasons. But it's um, and so. It's important that we have the stability and the continuation of all these other tr treaties. The uh, trade has been adversely affected for the last few months. I expect a significant proportion of that will be caught up later in the year. But given the figures you were quoting at the beginning of the seminar, um, I would be slightly surprised if we exceeded it. I would be pleasantly surprised, but I do think that going forward, the trend is going to be upwards in bilateral trade. Thank you, Richard, uh, for your analysis. And uh, now a little bit lighter topic uh, mm -hmm. for Yadranka and Robert. Uh, British culture is so popular in Serbia. It was, just, it was so during former Yugoslavia with pop music, with um, TV shows like Allo Allo, Monty Python, Flying Circus, uh, Only Fools and Horses. Uh, they, I don't know, how should I say, um, they educated us when we were kids and they educate people now. Uh, British soft power is really strong. It's... Um, it's, a, it, it's a, a funny thing to say, but uh, the, the Brits are, are really strong with the soft power. Can we enhance this cooperation and presence of British culture even more? And vice versa, uh, how could we present, uh, present uh, the Serbian culture in the UK? Well, um, it's a question for me. Yep. Uh, well, I will I'll share with you something very interesting, how to present a good British brand and knowledge of Serbia within the Britain. Uh, 2008, I traveled on Queen Mary with, uh, I didn't travel with him, but he was on the, on the Queen Mary, John Cleese from Monty Python. <laughs> so, yeah, when I went there, I said, Mr. Cleese, and I want him to sign the book. And as he said, where are you from? You know the way he is. He's very tall, long, long arms, very, very interesting character. I said, well, I'm not sure if you're aware um, it's a country called Serbia, used to be Yugoslavia. My God, he started giving me a lecture about Yugoslavia and particularly Serbia. His memories about fantastic. And I thought, my God, this is very, very good. But what I have noticed in the last, I would say, I have been in Britain for, I live here for 23 years. So for the last seven, eight years, I don't think we have done enough. Please, 
don't take me wrong, this is not a criticism. This is a positive way forward. And I believe that now with the new trade agreement or this new way of um, trading, not just in the goods and services, we should really look at uh, culture, media, tourism and sport much more careful and bring more to, to Serbia and from Serbia to Britain. So for example, uh, I'm very aware the gaming industry is incredibly improving. We had uh, them at our ICT webinar and that's something we don't need to be present. We can bring to the new generation quite a lot to understand what we do. Then the next one is um, tourism. Serbia has a great potential. So why don't we make better videos? Why don't we bring and show how can we do? Show our spas, which is a fantastic. And now that we have fantastic infrastructure, which I learned is going very well, and we are aware of that, we should bring this bridge much closer because being Serbian and living in Britain for more than 20 years, I would like to say we have a quite similar sense of humor. You will be very surprised. But we do, and yeah, and I always I'm not sad in the way that when we use example from British coming to visit Serbia's exit, for example, uh, uh, I would like to hear more of them. What is that we can offer to Britain? What is that that Britain can offer to us? There are lots of and lots of elements from fashion film industry, which is doing quite well. They started in 2014, presenting in the UK. Now they're fantastic. We have wine, we have lovely rafting we can offer, which Brits love very much. So there are huge, huge opportunity for such a small country as Serbia. And Britain is a big country and has a lots of different elements as well to the tourism. So I'm, I'm waiting for day when the we can fly from Manchester to Serbia directly. And also that brings in football, I'm not a big fan of football, but that's something brings the excellent um, image of Serbia in the UK. So when we look overall, I think we all tried here in Britain, Serbs, diaspora, Serbian embassy, we all trying really hard to bring closer, but it wasn't easy, but hopefully, we can do better in both ways very shortly. And I'm sure Robert Chauvin and what he's doing so far, I have been following, they're doing a great job. And uh, I can see this as a new humanism renaissance between two countries. So let's see next year where we will be after this question. Great, thank you. We have we have good band singing in English. Uh, Robert knows I have such a band. Uh, oh yeah. I wish, I wish we could export such bands to such bands to, to Britain. And uh, Robert, uh, another question is, uh, the next question is for you. Uh, what do you think, uh, how Serbia can raise the presence uh, of, of, our, of our goods and services in the UK, our touristic, tourist potentials? Uh, what should be done by our government, maybe to promote the country uh, through some campaigns? You know, we have Exit Festival, one of the, one of the biggest festivals in Europe. And every year prior to 2019 um, and the last cancelled uh, uh, event, uh, we had 15,000 15, Brits coming each year. I don't know what's going to happen this year. This year we, we're going to have like 20% of the um, tickets but it will happen. Uh, what do you think? How, how can we promote ourselves in Britain in any way? Thank you, Zhikica. Thank you, Jadranka and Queen Mary. Well, very classy. Uh, I, I was there also. I, I was traveling there on Queen Mary in 2000, <laughs> 2005. Uh, uh, <laughs> but not, 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 not with this gentleman. <laughs> well, I, I hear what <laughs> just happened with the Queen Mary. It just happened. With yeah, Queen yeah, Mary. yeah. <laughs> very, 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 very classy ship. Yeah, uh, uh, it is uh, really important for Serbia to have a strong presence uh, in the UK market, especially now after mm -hmm. Brexit. Uh, the UK is a big market, the Commonwealth of the nation also, and I think this is important task for uh, Serbian Chamber of Commerce, but also for the Ministry of Trade, Telecommunications, and Tourism, and uh, as well for the Ministry of the Economy. 
uh, as a publisher or as an owner and publisher uh, from the side of a private publishing company, they are more than welcome for any ideas regarding cooperation, promotion of Serbian tourism in the UK, British tourism in Serbia and the region of former Yugoslavia. We have uh, our uh, uh, Hello Travel magazine. Uh, so there is a maybe room for a new edition, Hello Travel Serbia in the UK or Hello Travel UK in Serbia. For us, uh, this is, uh, as someone mentioned today, uh, and as uh, Sir Winston Churchill said, the business as usual, really. Uh, great. Yes, uh, uh, I, can, I would like to ask Robert one thing. I think what would be great, uh, Richard and I uh, met Russ last week. And we discuss how we can bring better and closer to the British market. We have a, a very good idea about one big chef who will invite maybe to do program about Serbia. He's just doing in Greece. So let's see how that goes, because I think that will change the view of all what we can offer, because some parts of Serbia, like a Tuscany, I would like to say, maybe Absolutely. I'm exaggerating, Shumadia, no. that is really like Tuscany. And, and Fruška Gora, Fruška Gora. Oh, sorry, too. I forgot yeah. Fruška yeah. Gora, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> I'm from Vojvodina, <laughs> I'm from Vojvodina, so, no, no, I really used uh, last year during the pandemics and, and, and everything to explore Serbia, it, it was really... Uh, enough time to do that uh, cycling and, and traveling, especially here in this, in our Vojvodina region, it is, it is close for, 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 for us and easy, easy for, for cycling. And I, I'm, I'm sure now after, after last, uh, after last, last uh, 12 months that, 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 that you are, you are really, uh, really right about this. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I wrote an article, um, for diplomacy and commerce that uh, the Brits are actually uh, falling in love once again uh, with their resorts and towns and, uh, and uh, that this year and last year they, they, they flocked uh, to the British uh, coastal, coastal towns and uh, it will be a new love affair. And uh, when we were reading about that in Guardian and every, everywhere else, uh, I uh, suddenly had so many memories about the um, about the uh, TV shows uh, like Poirot uh, or, or something like that, uh, uh, Miss Miss Marple. Uh, so uh, it would be really romantic to uh, uh, for us uh, to to visit uh, Britain and uh, during the summer and to bathe in Irish Sea or Atlantic Ocean or or, or English Channel. Uh, uh, what can we do? Uh, uh, the question is for. Uh, uh, David and Richard, uh, maybe Adranka, what can we do to ease uh, the uh, visa regime? Well, um, as a chamber, we're obviously very, uh, you know, we're very focused on promoting trade both ways. Trade, trade is, you know, is, is partly about goods, but it's a lot more than goods. So it means people moving around as well otherwise you don't get services if people don't deliver services whether it's it or it's uh, consultancy of any kind or it's uh, it, it, it or it's it's serbian restaurants in london which would be a great thing to have more of um so we are we're very much focused on that the situation since brexit uh, as i mentioned uh, it, it involves a slight improvement a gradual improvement if you like in in the in in the ease with which non EU nationals uh, like Serbian nationals can uh, can get visas can get uh, can come to work in the UK the conditions are better than they were uh, the EU non EU divide is gone uh, and the opportunities are greater um, I think uh, we will continue to uh, work with the, the the British government the, uh, where we can to encourage them to take a uh, 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 an approach which encourages movement of uh, uh, of labour. Um, my feeling in general, and it's a it's it's, it's a kind of personal view, is that um, some people may think this is strange. Some people may think it, it it's understandable. But since Brexit, uh, some of the pressure politically has gone off this issue in the UK. It's become easier to make a case for. Uh, labour mobility now that it's been detached from the Brexit issue, which is now closed. That doesn't mean to say 
and we can promise that the British government's going to change its rules anytime soon. But we can work with them and we can work to make the economic arguments uh, along with, uh, for example, the British Chambers of Commerce and the other uh, uh, trade associations in the UK to do that. Um, I think the, the reality is, and we uh, I think this is right, my colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, but in the conversations that we've had both with the immigration lawyers who are members of our chamber, but also those British companies like the IT companies who are uh, setting up and investing in the UK, they haven't told us that visas are now a major obstacle that, that blocks that process. It's actually manageable. Obviously, it'd be easier if you didn't need a visa at all, and it'd be very simple. But there, there's a process there, there's going to be a process there. And I haven't heard uh, from, from the companies that this is a showstopper for them when they want to invest, when they want to expand their business. So uh, that's my thought. Richard may have something to add. He may decide I'm wrong and will tell you so. I, I, I largely agree with David. I think that, uh, but I, I, I would make two further points. Firstly, is that the relaxations are very much in the on the labour and employment side and not on the, the tourist and travel side, which is a disappointment to many, uh, many people from Serbia. I think there is, however, one obvious complication in the near term, and that is, uh, that is everything that's related to um, the additional controls over the pandemic. Uh, and I don't think that it is clear where that will leave. Um, I was just thinking this morning, listening to the news, that actually it's quite possible that one of the policies in the UK, because of the uh, <clears throat> uh, the in, uh, the 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 fact that you've got this so-called Indian variant, is now the most uh, uh, the most uh, is the most not popular the, mo the most common variant, and that actually trying to stop that going out of the country is going to become a policy issue as well as. Uh, and so I cannot think that uh, I absolutely agree with David in that it's not come up. Visas have not come up as a business issue. I do, however, think that it's going to remain a complicated, uh, the, the uh, uh, complicated by the, the, uh, the needs for the controlling the pandemic across the world in ways that I, I don't think we can predict. I would like to add on the business side about the visas. Uh, for example, in 2019, Please. we invited 10 companies to exhibit at Speciality Food. Those companies never been in the UK, maybe one or two. They all receive visas in one week, I would say less than a week. So it is not that difficult if you have reason why do you travel. And I'm sure this will just improve by time. So we shouldn't look a negative, look a positive, how to improve it, not to complain. Great, thank you everybody. Now the third round of questions. Uh, um, David, uh, you know the Western Balkan region quite well and your connection to Serbia dates back to 1997. What do you think about Serbia's role in the region and where do you see the potential for the cooperation growth? Well, gosh, you mentioned 1997. Well, the world's changed a lot since then and, I, uh, 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 and the prospects in the region look infinitely more uh, rosy than they did uh, back then, I would say. Yeah, Oasis um, was, was, was the best band in 1997 now there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't yeah. exist. Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think one of the things I was struck by, I mean, I've been um, with the Chamber now for a couple of years, and very early on, uh, I attended an event in London at which Mr. Marco Chadej the president of the uh, Serbian Chamber of Commerce uh, spoke. Uh, and I, on that occasion, he wasn't speaking so much as president of the Serbian Chamber, as president of the, I think it's called the WB6 uh, Chamber or the Chamber's Initiative of the, the countries in the region. And um, that demonstrates there's a degree of uh, cooperation uh, between the businesses of the region. And we see also on the political side between the governments of the region that obviously we couldn't have imagined back in 1997. But the important thing is looking forward, there's a, a, a recognition that from a business point of view, from an infrastructure point of view, and from so many other ways, collaboration between the countries of the region is really important. 
And it's important between countries that are in the EU and countries that are not in the EU, between the, the six that are, are, are not yet members of the EU. Um, and, and that is the way that business grows. If you're looking at it from the point of view of, say, a British investor or British business, looking at the market of the region as a whole is so much more interesting than looking at a smaller market from one country uh, uh, on its own. And of course, we all know that a lot of, a lot of business in, in the region uh, starts from or can be done through Serbia. So that brings a, a lot of opportunities. And I think when business can credibly see, British business in our case, can credibly see the companies of the region and the governments of the region increasingly uh, working together. I mean, all the kind of the fact that people are talking about mini Schengen agreements and all the things that go with that. Now, how they work out, when they work out, when they're completed, that's a different story. But it shows a mindset and it shows an approach. And of course, an infrastructure project, a road, a railway, whatever, doesn't stop at the border. Um, and so these things are seen together. So I think there are um, big opportunities. Now, I, I mean, what I say to British companies uh, when I'm trying to, to interest them in the region or in Serbia is, you know, you don't have to take my word from it. You might think I'm biased, British Serbian Chamber of Commerce, but look at the German companies, look at the Italian companies, look at the Chinese companies, look at whoever it is who is who are in Serbia, who are investing, who have seen these opportunities. They make it work. It seems sensible to them. It's worth looking at. And I think we, you know, I, I think the opportunities are there for the region. I think the region as a whole you know, it's the next, it must be the next big growth story in Europe because it, it, the, the potential is there, the money is there now in terms of the various kinds of investment for, for infrastructure development and so on. Um, there's a lot of untapped potential. We talk about tourism. I mean, the, the gap between um, uh, where, where Serbian tourism is now, what its potential is, is huge. Take wine, similarly. Um, I, I, I used to live in Greece, and um, Greek wine uh, was not something you could find in the UK, uh, apart from one or, one or two uh, well-known uh, brands that people would find when they were on holiday uh, and want to have when they got back. Now, it's, it, it, it's one of the growth uh, uh, nation, uh, countries of, of origin for, for wine. There's no reason why Serbia shouldn't be able to do exactly the same. The opportunity is there. So it's, a, it's the gap, to me, between... Uh, where things are now and where they could be, what hasn't been exploited. And that's true, both looking at it from the point of view of Serbia, looking at opportunities in Britain, and Britain looking at opportunities in Serbia and through Serbia to the region, as you say, that is what makes me most um, optimistic. If you, if I think back to, uh, back to 1997 or some of the later uh, periods of time I spend in the region, and I think about the infrastructure and I think how long it took to get from one city to another city then and how long it takes now, how much less it takes now. That makes such a difference. It can be such a multiplier. It's a multiplier for the economy of the region. It's also, I think, a multiplier for the perception uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the region from outside. Because if you go and you can get from one place to another quickly, you see a system that is functioning. You see a, a, a relative ease of movement. That makes a big difference to the opportunity. So I think uh, you know, if, you want to, if, if you want to look at some part of Europe at the moment, why not look at one which has got a, a real gap between reality and potential that is there for, 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 for making work? So um, I, I, I find it very hard to see why anyone would not be optimistic about the prospects for the, for the, for the region right now. Uh, great, thank you. And uh, the same question for Richard, but a little bit um, widened. Uh, the city recognized by Emerging Europe's panel of experts as having the most economic potential was the Serbian capital, Belgrade. The Future of Emerging Europe Awards 2021 is the fourth edition of the program, which showcases the best of the Emerging Europe region. Uh, why this award is such of such importance uh, for Belgrade? Um, having in mind, uh, uh, I mean, uh, could Brits uh, make uh, more investments? You know, uh, David said that the uh, British companies, the Italian, Austrian companies, Chinese companies have found their place in the market. The market is hungry uh, for everything. It's a new one um, after decades of stagnation. Now we have. 
uh, consumers boom. And uh, I think that uh, the Brits could find their place. Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, what, uh, what, what does it mean for a, a average British businessman to, to hear that Belgrade is um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, city in emerging Europe for, with, uh, with most economic potential? I I would I I'm I'm I was very pleased when when the, the Belgrade got this recognition recently and it's entirely justified, but I think from a point of view of, per, of perception, it's just a small part. I think, for better or for worse, that the, that Serbia does not have a, a a high profile in the UK, and that actually what little profile it is is very backward looking. Um, for fairly obvious reasons. And anything like this is going to change people's perceptions. I think it is going, it is different in terms of uh, businesses and whether they're investing or trading. But most of all, we as the chamber have got to, and in fact, the Serbia generally, have actually got to get over this complete lack of knowledge. And this is where things like the... Um, uh, the award help because it just gives a uh, raises the profile really what we need is a coherent strategy which the british serbian chamber can fit into but it can't drive that's really down to um, uh, the serbian government which to be fair with the serbia creates program is starting to do this um, but um, i think coming back because the UK and Serbia are on other sides of Europe, it's always been that, always been that little bit more difficult. Um, but coming back to where I started, I, the opportunity is definitely there. We will do our bit to, to improve the perceptions of Serbia in the UK. And of course, in slightly different ways, promoting the UK and Serbia. Um, but it, but it is, um, it's going to be a long, slow process. The more successful investments that happen, um, and there have been several, uh, several announced recently, um, that it's going to, uh, it's going to be sort of <clears throat> a positive feedback loop. It's going to get easier each time, and it's going to be more plausible because there'll be more successful examples. Of, of investors who've come invested for manufacturing purposes, um, either to re-export back to the UK or to use other trade agreements to re-export to uh, other places, particularly further east. Um, it's very exciting, but and we're only at the beginning. Uh, and it's nice at the beginning to have uh, the, this recognition given to the city of Belgrade. Thank you, Richard. Uh, it's, uh, it was a great analysis. And now something uh, for Yadranka. Uh, do you know that I've never been to the um, British Isles, actually. I've been to the UK, but not in the England or Scotland or anywhere else, but uh, to the overseas territories. And uh, mm, I think that many people would like to see Britain uh, first, you know, firsthand and to uh, learn something. Uh, uh, it's important and uh, to see uh, how the people uh, function, how they live, how they do business, um, not only the tourist purposes. How important is to share knowledge and experiences, especially when it comes to young people. Young people would really love to see Oxford and Cambridge and, I don't know, the pubs of London or maybe Peckham to see where Rodney and Elboy lived. Uh, which projects would be, uh, will be in focus this year? Uh, we know that you're working a lot on uh, this exchange of knowledge. Can you elaborate a little bit about you know, this? Of course. Um, I would say that uh, perception survey is changing by the day, as we can see with the new Foreign Direct Investment um, Award. But actually what I believe is young people, they are the future of each country, including Serbia. Therefore, for the future bilateral relationship depends on cultural understanding between our two countries, the UK and Serbia, because we are, we are talking about the UK and Serbia today. Uh, we have been very supportive over years and years, I would say since I joined 2014, 
to our young people from Serbia and particularly our uh, uh, previous chairman, Sir Paul Judge, who was who is, uh, was patron of George Business School in Cambridge, who was he was always saying youth and entrepreneurship, make them to be entrepreneur, is something will create the better future for Serbia and any country. So we have been working very closely with the Paxim Foundation. I don't know if you heard about them. Every year, this it was supposed to be last year the tenth one, I believe, tenth or ninth. Um, that's how many years we've been doing it. Um, we celebrate every year in May at the Trinity College, Cambridge. We have dinner for 75 people where we bring um, business people to, to meet our students at Cambridge, but also Paxim uh, scholars who usually they have two or three per year. Those scholars who are doing master at George Business School, they have to return to the country and I have to take that knowledge, which is fantastic things, what they are doing. But it's not just about that particular. What we do, because of very diverse board of directors of our knowledge in the UK, knowledge in Serbia, we try to bring closer all of that. We try to help in the way, I will use an example now with ICT and FinTech. We will do anything to help for our uh, startups to bring here to to learn how does Britain do this market is a very very advantage very mature there's a lots of uh, angels business angels a lots of uh, good mentoring a uh, lots of good schools in Oxford in London all over the UK and we have from our diaspora who works on those universities so so when you do think overall, just in Cambridge, I think we have more than 50 students in, um, in Cambridge alone from undergraduates, postgraduates, and that's something to cherish, to support. My dream would be one day that we all know where are we all together, that we have not kind of conference, but sharing that uh, knowledge and to bring more, much closer to each other because those people, there are those young people, they're ambassadors of Serbia in the UK. So at the moment, we are very focused on entrepreneurship and to, we spoke with Digital uh, Serbia, how we can improve, how we can increase that knowledge. Now that we all on Zoom, we don't need to travel, so everything is much faster. So we'll be introducing uh, also with the UK government, Department of National Trade is very keen to work with us uh, we as a team, David and Richard and myself, we've been doing this for the last several months, very hard to, to change all that, um, that relation. So, so much happening. And as you can see, we are not, we are small chamber, but we are really doing quite a lot of different things. And the only way we can do uh, with uh, very close partners who are very strong in their field and sector, but what we do, we bring that bridge we make life easier. So, so much will happen, you will hear from us. Uh, thank you, thank you, Adrenka. It's a great job, uh, as I see. And Robert, a one a question for you about uh, the cooperation in art, culture, and the youth. Um, uh, what is your impression about uh, the ties between the two countries in those areas? We had great potential in this area too. Today we have a great ambassador of UK to Serbia, a great Serbian ambassador to the UK, and also great Ministry of, Minister of Culture and Information of Republic of Serbia. So uh, I think this is momentum really for for improving uh, this uh, this kind of cooperation in in in, in those fields. For example, uh, with the Ministry of Culture uh, and Ministry of Construction, our group started an initiative for protection uh, of cultural heritage, especially castles and palaces in Serbia. Uh, and 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 the majority of them are here in, in, in our area of Vojvodina. And I think that the UK experience uh, in, in this area of, of castles and palaces uh, can be uh, extremely helpful in, the, in, this, in this area too.
Thank you, Robert. And um, I think we're uh, getting closer to the end. Uh, and I would like to ask the last uh, question for everybody. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, the fruitful and successful discussion that we had today. Uh, and for the very end, uh, I can uh, I can hear some words about the future developments of um, of uh, British Serbian relations. Uh, what can we what can we expect in the future? Uh, David, uh, from your perspective as a chairman uh, in London, uh, what does a partnership trade and cooperation agreement uh, bring uh, in the future and uh, what, what can we expect, um, I don't know, in the next uh, five years, let's say? Well, I mean, what does success look like? Success, I guess, looks like... Um, both countries looking at the other one uh, m much more at the top of the list, thinking where I need, I'm looking for opportunities. What about Serbia? What about Britain? That hasn't been the case in the past, but I'd see no reason why it shouldn't be. I, success looks to me like seeing more Serbian businesses in the UK. Uh, I think it seems like some more, I'd like to see some more Serbian food and wine on the shops in the UK. That would give me, that would certainly be successful for us personal point of view for mine, but I think that would be a great thing. I think I'd, I'd, I, would, I would hope to see more British products in Serbia, more British involvement in some of those keynote infrastructure projects. Um, and we, we haven't, I think, uh, mentioned very much uh, renewable energy and the green economy, but I'd expect to see, I'd like to see uh, British companies uh, involved in, in some of those projects in the region, as well as the roads and the railways and the digital infrastructure. Um, and I think all that is possible. It's not going to happen by itself. It's not going to happen. We won't wake up one day and see it happen. Um, but I think the, 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 the framework is there. The, 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 the groundwork is there. The, the, the opportunity is there in a way it hasn't been in the past. And um, when it, whenever anyone sort of looks um, as if they're not confident about something happening, I say, well, if you haven't really tried, you can't say you failed. And I think in the past, not because anyone hasn't worked hard, but the opportunities just haven't been there. But if we try now, there's no reason why success shouldn't look like all the things I just mentioned. Great. Uh, uh, saying uh, something, um, you mentioned something about uh, renewable energy and, and uh, I remembered something about green goals and uh, the forthcoming uh, summit in Glasgow uh, about a climate change and green energy. So it's, it could be it could be in every country and especially in Serbia, it could be uh, an area of uh, huge change in investment and a, a good a good place for potential British companies uh, to participate. And uh, Richard, uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about um, the future? I don't know, give me your predictions about the forthcoming. Um, well, I think probably uh, at, the, at the moment, what we've faced is a, 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 a huge temporary increase in business risk from the pandemic, from Brexit, um, and I think these things we will inevitably pick up uh, because the pandemic will sort of uh, the 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 will will have will eventually go away, even if in a slightly more complicated way than people and slower way than people wish. Brexit, we're still sorting things out, um, and and whilst Brexit does not affect bilateral commercial relations directly, indirectly it affects it in a lot of ways. Uh, and as people learn learn the ways around things, learn what can be done, what can't be done, identify the opportunities that will improve um, improve the business relationship uh, between the two countries. I think there's one other thing, and that is um, that Serbia continues to um, uh, to emphasise the importance of the rule of law um, and. Uh, I haven't mentioned our involvement with the Foreign Investors Council, which is driving it through um, as, as the main business organization focusing on this. But basically, this has to continue. I see no reason why it shouldn't, um, but that is required for the business environment in Serbia to continue to improve. And that of itself will encourage more foreign investment, more foreign trade, 
uh, and that will improve all Serbs uh, or all Serbian residents, the quality of life, because goods will be more easily available, they'll be more cheaply available, and, th and the certainty both from business life and personal life, from a, a rule of law, will make everybody's life better. I'm sure it will happen. I'm sure it'll be slow, not necessarily straight uh, forward in a straight line, but I think that is a, an also an important uh, way forward to help the commercial relationship. And I look forward to it happening or continuing. Me too. Thank you. Uh, Yalanka, what can we learn from each other? How can we emulate the British way of doing business as much as possible in Serbia? I mean, real British way, not the way the trotters uh, <laughs> had or lock, stock and two smoking barrels. I mean, we have, we have it already. So we, we don't have that way of doing business uh, because pretty much uh, for, the, for the last couple of decades, a lot of Serbian businesses were like trotters or, oh, or, yeah, or, or, or Jason Statham in, in, in smoking <laughs> barrels. So, I mean, can we, can we do it really properly now? Well, I'm always a supporter of the best way to learn from each other is to work together on the particular project. And that's where we can learn from each other. Only the pro the learning is the practice is mother of learning. So we can do more projects, engaging more between two countries on all of those different sectors we mentioned today. I'm sure we can be somewhere in a year time in a different place. I can use an example of how, for example, Tech Lab from Serbia, Dr. Ivana Kostic actually made that happen. What she did, that she put all international uh, uh, mentors on her advisory board from United States and UK, who are advising her in Serbia how to do it. And because of that, she won the international award. So with the internet, young people are very creative as I said, their future, and we, let's do a lots of projects, a lots of creative industries, and I'm sure we will be in different place next year. Robert, what can we learn from the British and uh, vice versa? What can they uh, learn from us? What, what Serbia can offer the UK? Pretty much the same question I asked Yadranka. As I said, we can uh, learn a lot from a great British nation, which is still in fields of culture, language and economy, the empire on which the sun never sets. Uh, also, also, Serbian people in the UK and here in Serbia as well, our scientists, our athletes, our artists, they have all a great contribution for British and global civilization. Great. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the participation in uh, this great conversation. Have you got uh, anything else to conclude? Have you got any, any final words, um, something that we missed uh, in our questions? I don't think so. I think I'd, um, I, 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 I hope that everyone listening, uh, whether in, in, in Serbia or Britain, uh, thinks uh, just for a few more minutes than they might have done otherwise about the the opportunities that are there, uh, and then they they pick up the phone or they get out their their phone and they email us and they um, contact us and we'll uh, try and help them on the, on the way that they're going. But there are there are lots of new opportunities, and I'd be surprised if everybody's thought of all of them. So now's a great time. Great. Uh, anyone else? I God save you. <laughs> now is a great time <laughs> to think about the Serbia once again and to think about the bilateral commercial relationship. You know, uh, you know, uh, Liam Gallagher had uh, the album two years ago. Uh, it, it was uh, titled um, uh, Why Me? Why Not? So everybody, everybody uh, in, in the business, in culture, should ask uh, themselves the same question. Why me? Why not? Why not me? Um, from my side, from my side, uh, God save the Queen and long live uh, friendship between uh, British and Serbian nation. What a wonderful way to end. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so um, I will uh, address now our audience. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for uh, watching us. Uh, thank you for following the fir very first uh, in focus uh, talk. Uh, it was decided. Uh, it was dedicated to the uh, relations between the UK and Serbia, and uh, this is the, our first online conference. This was actually our first online conference, and I would like to uh, thank my wonderful guests for uh, this conversation. And uh, see you next time. And uh, you businessmen, you people from culture, uh, grab your phones, grab your computers and send emails, uh, call and make new ties between uh, these two countries. Ours may be small, but um, we can learn a lot from the UK as we have learned during the past several centuries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.